Welcome to McDougal. After this show, you will never look at a hamburger the same way again. We'll meet international gourmet Paul Wenner. Hello, I'm Wayne Judd. And now, stocking the salad bar of medical advice, Dr. John. Okay, I like that. That's great. And we'll talk about that salad bar here. I brought a copy of a recent USA Today. It tells us uh, kids who shun veggies risk ill health later in life. They talk about how 35% of the cancers are attributed to our diet. All kinds of serious health problems in kids and adults. You know, Wayne, when I first discovered that uh, kids were interested in good health, it, uh, it was on the occasion when I was lecturing to uh, high school students. It was a high school in Hawaii called Punahou. Mm -hmm. And I got uh, done telling them all about the relationship between diet and breast cancer and heart disease. And I told them uh, all kinds of issues of obesity and how they get fat on the rich American diet. And then they started asking me questions about protein and calcium. I answered all those questions. And then they hit me with a question that almost knocked me off the stage. They said, okay, doctor, okay, we believe all this, but how do we get our parents to eat this way? Wow. Couldn't believe it because, you know, I'd been sitting in my in my office listening to the parents saying, yeah, okay, we'll eat this way, but and our can't kids, get our and kids, can't to kids eat this and stuff. And That's it, right. it, it became obvious to me that it was just a matter of having the information. It didn't yes. matter how old you were. It's just a matter of knowing. And that, and that, that applies to kids um, that are even younger than high school students. But I don't think parents <clears throat> and kids... Um, I just think that there's a there's a, like a communication oh, gap of course or something, there is. Of course isn't there? there. Yeah, and, I, and it's not cool to eat what your parents eat anyway, maybe. Or, or well, something. in some families, but you know, there are many, many families where the kids have gotten this idea about good nutrition. They've introduced it to the family, and the whole family's changed and saved yes. mom, mom and dad's life. And it's very important for everyone, young and old, to get this message, but particularly when you're younger to get it, because here you're, you're, you're building your body, you're setting your attitudes and preferences for the rest of your life. We know, for example, that if you ch check blood cholesterol levels and you find people who have high blood cholesterols when they're in the teenagers, they maintain those high blood cholesterols through adult, adult life and they end up being the ones who have heart attacks. Kids that are overweight as adults, they're still overweight. But it's, it's, it's so hard to, to convince kids who are feeling good that this matters. Well, How do you kids convince do, kids? That well, it makes kids do feel like they're invincible, and that is a problem. So what I do is I appeal to things that are important to them. For example, athletics. I explain to them that this is the best diet that you can possibly eat to perform. And I give them examples of athletes like Carl Lewis, for example, follows the McDougal program, eats vegetables. And he won, actually won the uh, world record for the 100-meter dash on the program I teach. I give other examples of athletes who can perform better and explain why they perform better. And they get excited about that because kids want to perform. They want to be at their best. I talk to them about things that are really important to them, like mm -hmm. their body weight. One of the saddest things is to see an overweight boy or girl who uh, is socially ostracized. And they don't understand. They think it's because they overeat or they have some psychological problem. They don't know it's because mother is teaching the family or father, teaching the family to eat foods that are so high in fat and deficient in carbohydrate that they have no choice but being fat. And once okay. you give them that message and they switch the components of the food around, the kids trim down forever. Okay, so, so that's nice. The weight is right, you can be a yeah, how about, how about How about pimples? What we're taught and what doctors teach is that diet has, or acne has nothing to do with diet. And, uh, you know, I hear that all the time from very chocolate, noted... Chocolate, but doesn't chocolate cause zits? I always heard chocolate causes zits Well, that, as a matter of fact, that was a study done in the 1970s by a man named Holman, published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. And that's, as far as I know, the only study that's ever been done and, and published in the literature on the relationship between diet and acne. And what they did is they took two high-fat diets, and they put chocolate in one, and they left chocolate out of the other, and they counted the pimples, and they all had the same number of pimples. It's not now, for... Now, that'd the, be a job for you. It's not... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not from the chocolate. It's from the, it's from the fat. The fat causes the pimples, not right. the chocolate. What happens is you eat this high-fat diet, whether it's vegetable oil or animal fat. The oil ends up on your skin, and the bacteria break down that fat. They eat the fat, break it into free fatty acids, which irritate the skin and cause the formation of pimples. Now you're talking. Okay. And if children, children, uh, teenagers will take and change their diet and switch to a low-fat diet, the greasiness of their skin will go away, the bacteria won't have the fats to eat, and the pimples will clear up. And that's have you a, seen it happen? All the time. All the time with, with kids. As a matter of fact, I have a... Well, I, why I, have aren't a, you, I mean, you should be filthy rich. Kids would 
No, there's no way to sell that, is there, John? It's hard. It really yeah. is. You know, people would rather buy a pimple cream or, yeah. or, or a cholesterol pill instead of the real pill that works, which is the one to five pounds of food they eat every day. But some of them, some of the adults and some of the teenagers and some of the children get the message, and then they finally have, they understand they have control of the most important aspect of their life, their health and their appearance. And once they get this message, you can't stop them once they understand That's it. It's remarkable. Well, so food matters to kids, too. It absolutely it does. Lot. And it's a lifetime. What a legacy to give your children good health absolutely. by teaching them a, a proper message. Good stuff, John. Well, we're going we're gonna to talk about how to make it even easier. We're going to talk about how to make burgers with a man who is, is a, a big success, an entrepreneur, Paul Winner, a man I've known for a long time. When we Great. come back Look from this commercial break, we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Learn English while you watch TV on Hello Channel. And welcome back. With me is Paul Winner. Paul has been a friend of mine for many years. We met back when his company was uh, real small, insignificant. In fact, you were just trying to make it survive back in those days. And... Uh, in 1993, your company was the fastest growing company on all three stock exchanges. That's correct. And uh, Forbes magazine voted it of the best companies in the world, the 35th best company in the world. Yes, out of 200 companies. That, that says something not only for you as a business person, but also for the attitude of people as far as changing their diet. Wholesome and hearty is it Wholesome Hardy Foods? Yes, Wholesome and Hardy Foods. Wholesome and Hardy mm -hmm. Foods, but they know it as Garden Burger. Garden Burger is the, uh, the more famous. How did you get uh, started way? in this, Paul? Gosh, I got to go back to like, you know, pre-teens there. I became a vegetarian when I was 17 and, uh, you know, kind of changed my life. I had uh, tuberculosis, bronchial asthma, and it made such a difference in my health that uh, I said, hey, there's some connection here between what you put in your mouth and, uh, you know, what's on your blood. At age 17, that, yeah, but 17. that was back in the old days when people didn't know anything about that. And that's yeah. kind of how I evolved, you know. I was a vegetarian then and uh, still am. And uh, taught cooking in community colleges for uh, 14 years, uh, vegetarian cooking. Yeah. Did you have any, any background to do that except for the fact that you like to cook and you, you developed a talent? And, well, well, you didn't take, go to culinary school or anything like that? You just No, I actually have a degree in television production, you know, which uh -huh. doesn't really fit. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, um, that was my hobby is food. Because when I was uh, a kid, I was sick. Um, I couldn't go outside, so I would cook. I would make the food for the family. And so that evolved into, uh, you know, Whole Foods cooking. And uh, down the line, I just started teaching it. You ever have a restaurant? Oh, I'm afraid I did. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a good business, huh? You know, 100 hour a week, uh, work weeks, and, uh, but the Garden Burger was born in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And uh, so even though I lost all my money that I saved for 12 years, um, you know, the Garden Burger came out of there as being the positive part of the restaurant. And you thought America was ready for that? When was this, the, the Garden Burger? Um, that was 1981 when I first uh, invented the Garden Burger mm -hmm. and then uh, four years into the restaurant. And it became the most popular item on the menu. Right. And so I thought, hey, maybe I can sell these to other people. Well, then I went to health food stores and health food restaurants, and they weren't so interested. Uh, but then I went to regular restaurants, and they said, well, hey, we'll throw it on the menu. And next Why to a hamburger, see what happens. And slowly but surely, people started ordering garden out. burgers. You know? Well, it, I mean, to, yeah. it's obvious to me, and if other people would stop and think about it, they'd realize what tastes, really tastes on a burger is all the garnishes, the ketchup. Mm -hmm the uh, mustard, the relishes, the uh, lettuce and tomatoes you put on. So, I mean, that's a tremendous amount of the taste. And if you can just get close to what they're used to as far as the burger patty, right? then you can make it. Well, uh, our goal when we started, I, I ate all the meatless burgers in the marketplace, and most of them were soy burgers. And garden burgers are made mostly of mushrooms. That's the main ingredient. Mushrooms, onion, oats, brown rice are the four major ingredients. And I thought to myself, I'm not going to try to taste like a hamburger, but I'm going to be as delicious as a there hamburger in its own right. Great strategy. And uh, because at that time, you know, the soy burgers, just had, the people had an attitude toward them at the time. Soy has really yeah. come a long ways. Well, one of the problems I've had trying to, every time I've thought of becoming vegetarian, is that all the substitute meat products are so, gosh, awful to eat. They're well, terrible. a lot of them are. Um, this year we'll sell 100 million garden burgers. So you got to say that there's got to be something, some little some magic to the, to the garden burgers. Anybody in our live so. audience know about garden burgers? Oh, uh, everybody yeah. does. Yeah. yeah. The whole hey, thanks for your support. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I had an experience. Uh, I went to a, uh, one, one of the standard fast food type restaurants that decided to introduce a vegetarian burger. 
And I went in and ordered the vegetarian burger, took it back to my seat and started eating it. And I thought, oh my goodness, they made a mistake. So I went up to him and I said, no, you gave me a real meat burger. They said, thank you. It was a compliment because it was so close to right, beef. Right, and right. to me, I just threw it in the trash. It was so disgusting. <laughs> but uh, it, you Too really like, don't yeah. want to make it just like a hamburger. You want to make it better that's than right. a hamburger. That's a well, great Well, uh, you know, that's the garden burger. It's, it's better than a hamburger, and it's so much better for you. It's one-sixth the fat. You know, and, um, you know, only 15% of the calories come from fat. So. I've tried a lot of the soy burgers, and some of them are, are very tasty, but mm -hmm. there's an awful lot of protein and an awful lot of fat in many of them. Yes. Garden burgers were designed to be half complex carbohydrates. That was the goal. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you but know, you still put some dairy products in A little bit, yes. yes. But we do also make uh, non-dairy uh, burger patties, but yeah. they don't sell as well, and but you they're know, available. When you go to a restaurant and order a garden burger, I have to tell you this, Paul. Maybe i got to send an instruction sheet out with it. But Believe you order, me, we do. We, you, order, you order a garden burger, and, and often they'll fry it. Yes. And sometimes on the same skillet, I think that they fry yeah, the a real burger. A little blessing, you know. You know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so... So we yeah. got to get better instructions. Well, you know, at the restaurants, they don't listen to you with a darn, you know. But yeah. I'm real happy to have 25,000 of them serving garden burgers. So. Do you make any other products? Have you had any yes. spinoffs? Oh, yeah. The garden sausage, we're in a lot of, uh, you know, breakfast houses. And mm -hmm. the uh, garden veggie, which is actually a zero-fat, uh, non-dairy. Mm -hmm. um, then we have a garden vegan, which is also zero-fat, non-dairy. Mm -hmm. Now, do these have uh, nut products in them, too? Uh, no, no nuts. I don't use nuts because that's too much fat. Too much fat. Yeah, so, so most the of the vegan grains. vegan, and what was the other one? A garden veggie has five fresh vegetables and uh, oats, brown rice, mm. and... Uh, and no uh, dairy. Uh, no dairy. It uh, has a non-dairy cheese. So. We non-dairy cheese. Yeah. Uh -huh. But this is... Okay, not this very is, uh, yeah, but not uh, too much fat from that. Paul, zero we were, yeah, zero fat. Okay. We were talking no before we went on uh, camera. Mm -hmm. And you said that uh, that really the financial end of this and the rewards you've received financially don't compare to the, the, the satisfaction of promoting better things for people to eat. Say a little more about that. Well, you know, this has been my goal. I've never been uh, um, driven by money. Uh, it's nice to have money to pay your bills, of course. <laughs> and there were years that I couldn't do that. But uh, my goal has always been to put something in front of somebody that they enjoyed, they wanted to eat, and give them a choice next to a hamburger. You know, I'd like to see hamburgers disappear. And I don't think that, um, you know, meatless uh, burgers are going to be, I mean, excuse me, meat burgers are going to be in the future. I really think that meatless uh, is the future. So, um, and I'm working real hard at that. Like I said, uh, we're going to sell 100 million garden burgers this year. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. $40 billion dollars were, uh, of hamburgers are sold each year. It's hamburgers. Mm -hmm. So you can see all the meatless burger business in the crazy, world is only 300 million. There's probably room for a lot of competitors, Paul. There's room for competitors, uh -huh. room for major growth, you know. And, and uh, I know you would encourage any company that got interested in changing this meat addiction that people have in this any country. Any company. I would encourage them. In fact, is they call me all the time. I help, help, help them, them with their, uh, <laughs> right. you know, their businesses. So. And their marketing. That's really good. Yes, great. yes. Well, I, you know, people are changing, and you've got, you're in the forefront, no question about it. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Great story. We're going to be back right after this commercial break to find out a lot more about a successful business person. We'll be right back. Learning a new language can be difficult and discouraging, but it doesn't have to be. Hello, I'm Karen, introducing Hello Channel, the revolutionary new channel designed especially to teach English. If you can speak English, the future is open for you, since speaking English means greater opportunity and higher paying jobs. By watching Hello Channel, you are immersed in this valuable language. You'll hear the words being spoken. You'll see the speakers' mouths when they say the words. You'll read what's being spoken in large, clear subtitles. And you'll speak out loud, practicing what you have just learned. There is no better or faster way to learn a language than total immersion. Hello Channel does exactly that. There's programming on every level so you can watch the shows that are just perfect for you. Whether you've spoken a little English, a great deal of English, or none at all, 
the Hello Channel has something for everyone. Join us for a convenient, affordable, and fun way to shape your future. There's so much in store for you if you'll just say hello. And welcome back. With us, Paul Winter, and we're talking about the all-American dream as far as food is concerned, the hot dog and the hamburger. That's I mean, I, I almost ruined my health on both of them. Well, a lot of people have. No question about yeah. it. Yeah. And, and you are often an alternative. You know, I have tried, Paul, the alternative hot dogs, and you have an alternative hot dog here. I have not yes. tried it, but to tell you the truth, uh, I can eat maybe one, but if I eat two, then I end up feeling poorly. Mm -hmm. Now, is your hot dog going to give me the same problems? I would say the garden dog is probably uh, protected uh, from giving anybody any problems. Okay, why it's do you, been think, blessed. you think it's just so, <laughs> it's it's so high in soy protein? Uh, I don't have any soy. Yeah, most of them are soy yeah. protein. And, and they really do. They make me feel as, you know, as bad as I remember the original hot well, dogs. Well, you know what? I can't eat any of the soy uh, dogs either. And that's why I created a meatless dog that has no soy protein. And actually, it has uh, five fresh vegetables in it mm -hmm. and some wheat gluten because, you know, you have to get the structure. So, so, so. these products that we're looking at, they, they're about the same shape as their counter products, but that's about all you can say. My goal was to put in the same bun, right, you know, that yeah. was my goal. Right. I didn't right. want them to change everything, but you know, if they can just uh, take a hamburger patty out and put a meatless burger, right, uh, or take a, uh, you know, a hot dog, which uh, I mean, we can't even talk about what a hot dog's made out of in, oh, you know, yes. in public. Well, you, know? parts. you can't <laughs> so, name the parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, that's right. That's what you can't I do. I think people are in denial about hot dogs, you know, I mean, yeah. but a lot of kids eat hot dogs, and that's why I think it's really good to have, uh, you know, something that tastes great mm -hmm. and is good for you. So this is going to be zero cholesterol, low in fat, high in dietary fiber, high in and they're not going to kill you with all the soybeans. Exactly, and, 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 and no artificial flavors right. or uh, HBP. That's well, I say, let's cook. Let's, let's, let's. Well, uh, yeah, what I have here, I'm just going to grill up a, a garden burger. What's really nice is these are just... <laughs> this is the kind of cooking you and I can do. Oh, we can Wait, do it. Yep, I think yeah, Jai's can do this, you know. <laughs> uh, they're already pre-baked and frozen, so I mean, uh, all you do is heat it. You heat them and eat them. That's kind of my. Uh, I, you, know. I, you know, I don't do that. I, I eat, you know, eat your products, uh -huh. and I do not do it this way. I throw them in the microwave. Two and a half minutes, they're done. Oh well, you can do that, but you know what? I'm spoiled. I really like to grill them up a little mm -hmm. bit, get that crispiness on them. Mm -hmm. uh, now, there's the Maui. This is my favorite. I have fresh pineapple. A fresh bell pepper and uh, red onions, and Beautiful. I grill all those together and grill them and put them on top of the burger. Mm. And that's uh, we're not really sizzling here, but you know we're we're getting uh, somewhere in the range. Um, Turn and the again, the below. condiments are the thing that really make the hot dog for me or the hamburger yeah, for me. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you can use mustard and uh, ketchup, and uh, really. It just makes a great dog. I, I like red onion on there too. Oh yes, onions. But uh, you know, you gotta watch yourself a little bit with the sodium, of course, with the condiments. You know, and are you yes, kind of, you know, sodium. Well, I I get to try and buy healthy condiments. Yeah, yeah. Well, those are healthy condiments. And uh, and of course, you could always make the argument that the mustard has a lot of fat in it, but you just use a little bit. A of little that. bit. And so you know, I find all kinds of excuses for just in my find my hot dogs and hamburgers. Oh, <laughs> Well, uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna just grill up some of these vegetables, and uh, yeah, you're trying to turn the heat off on me, huh? Well, <laughs> now, now, Paul, with all the success you've had, have you thought about doing a study where we take uh, American teenagers and switch them from the beef hot hamburgers and beef hot dogs, and switch them over to these uh, these vegetarian products? I mean. Can't you just kind of set aside a little of that, of the, a little of that success, and do the studies that need to be done? And then you could be kind of like with those toothpaste that used to advertise. When we put fluoride in our toothpaste, we got 23 percent fewer cavities. Yeah. You, go. you could say, well, when we switched the burgers and the hot dogs on these kids, we got a 50 percent drop in cholesterol. Hey, I love it. Actually, I, I think it's a great you can be idea. Be your marketing person. Um, hey, you're hired. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Can I afford you? That's the question. <laughs> you can. Yeah. I just uh, I'll just take hot dogs and hamburgers for. Uh, yeah, give him a garden dog. And give him a garden burger. Yeah. Um, you know, it, uh, you know. Really, in a way, we're doing the studies because we're selling to hundreds of school districts now across mm. the America, and uh, like in Texas, many many of the schools are now using meatless burgers. So it's kind of no. happening. Yes, Do you know how the kids really. are responding? Do you get any feedback? Oh, they're doing. They're the ones who have asked for them. That's you know? great. And mm. there's a special a program story. now that where you can actually. Um, you can actually have a, a special table where you can get meatless burgers and salad bar and that sort of thing, kind of to offset the taco, you mm -hmm. know, places and the burger places not going right. into the schools, which is real shame. The fast food guys are moving into they the schools. They even have them in hospitals. In ho One of the, the, hospitals. the most famous burger dealer in town. You don't know if you want to be identified in hospitals, uh, uh, do you, Paul? Seriously, they have, they have uh, McDonald's restaurants in hospitals. 
the, the, you know, yeah. I, I don't know what to say about that except it's uh, it's hard to believe. You think well, that's it's, uh, true? I mean, uh, can't you do something about that, John? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I feel like I should go out and do a, 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 a march or a protest outside the hospital, but I, I mean, there's got to be something there. I mean, I, I find it hard oh, to let believe. Let me ask you: Have any hospitals or garden burgers? Oh, hundreds of hospitals use garden burgers. Hundreds. I, that's that's. I mean, true. there's twenty four thousand. I bet they feed places. them to the doctors. They don't bother giving them to the patients. They'd ruin their business. Oh yeah, no, we don't want that to happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hey, I'm, I'm growing up some fresh pineapple. By the That's way, pineapple is just full of enzymes, and it, you know, it really helps with the digestion. Now, you also told me that you're, uh, your sausage that you have. Oh, and by the way, you know, I, I, I'm telling on you, Paul, but I, not only do I have these as, burger, as burgers, but in the morning I have them and replace them for sausages, and I have them with my hash brown potatoes that, oh. are, that come out of a box, hash yes. browns, and I just grill them on, uh, in, in a pan like this, uh -huh. hash browns with no fat, put some of my favorite no-oil barbecue sauce over the top, and I have one of these patties with it instead of a sausage. And uh, well, one of the things you told me that I also like, if I really want to treat myself, is to have a little maple syrup with it. Didn't you tell me that's how you originally sold your sausages? I did, yeah. Yeah, in fact, they have some maple syrup. Uh, we better turn that down. Um, in them already, but you know, that's my favorite. I like to dip them in there. Yeah, a little maple syrup. I gotta be real careful not to get a real you you know, get deep bowl away. of maple, yeah, right. you know? <laughs> so. So, so that's it. Yeah, that, that's, you gotta that's have the ready mustard. Deep. You gotta have the relish. Yeah, this is the Maui. Actually, the this teriyaki. is the teriyaki sauce. You like that? Now, I got a suggestion for this. A lot of times, it's real high in sodium. Whatever the brand, I'm not selling this brand, of course. But uh, you mix it with pineapple juice, and then thicken it with a little cornstarch, mm -hmm. and you, you can just make it go a long way as the flavoring. So it's really good. Mm -hmm. Then you just brush it on, and then that would be a teriyaki burger with the yeah, fresh uh, pineapple, the grilled uh, vegetables. So, um, you know, that's... Uh, that's, that's beautiful. A, that's beautiful, the dish. Paul. You know, it's really great to see somebody who's made it successfully doing good for people. Well, and uh, that's the real thing. Nobody should deprive you of your success. The thing is, absolutely. you did it. I bet you look yourself in the mirror and feel real good about yourself every day, Paul. Well, we do donate a percentage of uh, all our business to helping organizations who promote uh, healthier eating. Two yeah. percent of our profit, so... Well, this is a great show. I certainly appreciate you sharing this with everybody. And I think everybody ought to at least try a healthy burger. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. You can get garden burgers in restaurants across America. So wherever you live, you right. know, uh, try one. Well, can thank you, you very grocery much. Grocery stores? Yes, grocery okay. stores. Yeah. And we'll be back after this spot. Thank you. Why should you watch Hello Channel? Because learning English should be inexpensive and learning English should be available to everyone. If you want a brighter future, join us and say hello. And welcome back. Now, I imagine some of you think I'm prejudiced about Paul Winter and his burgers because I've told you I eat them all the time. So I invited somebody from our audience to come up and give us a taste test. What's your name? Tara. Tara, you eat hamburgers? Yeah, all the time. All the time. So you're an expert on these. Why don't you give it a try and tell us what you think? All right, Tara. Ladies and gentlemen, you're witnessing a high school yeah, student being drum converted. Roll. Here, here we go. Maybe. Drum roll. Yeah. Yeah. Keep munching. Take your time. Well, mm. what, what do you think? Really good. And hey, really yeah. good. You're not just saying that because you're on camera. Is it really good <laughs> enough good. so that you could uh, replace your regular burgers with it, or just have these once in a while? Replace the regular burgers. You're really All right. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, Paul. Sometimes I, I find that that students uh, they're they're more swayed by concern for ecology, concern for animal rights, and right. so on. And um, you describe this as not having a. Mother? <laughs> Never having a mother or a face. Yeah, right. So we really ought to be able to appeal to people that way. Environmentally, I mean, it's a huge difference from eating meatless burgers. I mean, you can save a lot of, you know, land and water resources, that sort of thing. So. Right. It's the right thing to do. Right thing yeah. for the future. Tara, yeah. I want to thank you very much. And Paul Winter, I want to thank you very much. Indeed. Great success. You deserve that success. I mean, you've done, you've done something good for the public. Thanks, thank you. Just great. Appreciate it. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Please join us. Yeah.